Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at the production possibilities curve again. So this is part four of uh, a series of videos regarding the production possibilities. And in this video, we're going to look specifically at the idea of growth in the production possibilities and actual output, actual growth, economic growth, and so on in the context of the PPC. All right, so in this fourth video of the series, we're going to continue to use the example from the previous video of the Russian Federation. And on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of R7 rockets being produced. And on the y-axis, we're looking at the quantity of barley in millions of tons being produced. And in the previous video, we saw why the production possibilities curve, labeled PPC1, is bowed outwards. And that was a result of using labor resources that were not um, able to easily transition from barley production to R7 rocket production. And that was discussed in detail in that, in that pre previous video. Um, so let, let's first highlight two key terms. That is, number one, economic growth. Economic growth refers to increases in the quantity of output. So the quantity of goods and services uh, being generated in a national economy, a macro economy, over a particular time period, ceteris paribus. Right? So the key word here is economic growth is achieved when we're increasing output over time. Actual growth is increases in output as a result of reducing the amount of unemployed resources in the economy and increasing productive efficiency in the economy, perhaps as a result of technology and so on. All right. So economic growth is achieved anytime we increase output. We used the example of actual output and actual growth in our second video of the series when we're looking at unemployment in Spain versus Andorra. And so Spain, for, for example, you know, we said that perhaps they're at point G because they have, let's say, on average, about 14% of their labor force that's unemployed. And because since they are not fully employing all of their labor, they're able to produce output at point G. So that would be actual output. Point G is reflection reflective of the idea of actual output. An output in reality is typically within the production possibilities curve because we cannot fully employ all of our land, labor, and capital resources. There's always going to be some level of unemployed resources. So Spain, in that uh, previous video, 14% unemployed labor. Perhaps point G is reflective of the actual amount of output within a real world economy like Spain. Now we labeled another point, H, another example of actual output for the country of Andorra, where they have about 4% of their labor force that's unemployed. So both points G and H are examples of actual output. A country in reality producing beneath their PPC curve. But what's the, the goal? The goal of a nation over time is to employ more of their resources. So if, let's say, you know, if Russia was at point G, their actual output was point G, but over time they're able to employ more of their resources or their labor resources, where they're going from 14% of unemployed labor, uh, labor to 4%, then as a result of that employment of those inputs, they're achieving actual growth. Why? Because there's an increase in the outputs as a result of reducing the unemployed resources. So if Russia is at point G, their actual output is at point G, and that's a result of only employing you know, 86% of their total labor force, 14% is unemployed. But if over time they're able to employ more of their labor force, then they're moving from point G to point H, and they achieve actual output as a result of reductions in unemployed resources. This is also considered economic growth. 
because they're increasing output. Economic growth just requires an increase in output. So as they're increasing output from G to H, there's more rockets being produced, more barley being produced. That technically is economic growth. Okay. So actual growth is reflective of where nations are in reality, producing within their PPC curve. And if they're able to employ more of resources, they're producing more outputs. So that's what we mean by actual growth, which is technically economic growth. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. Next, I want to talk about how can we increase the production possibilities curve? How can we achieve growth in production possibilities? And that was again discussed in the second video of the series, and we're going to reiterate that, right? Here we'll go. So here we're going to list how we can achieve growth in the production possibilities or the production possibilities curve. And that is achieved, and this is important because you will see this again in macroeconomics. This is achieved through a change, and delta is the symbol for change, change in the quantity of resources or inputs to if there's a change put delta for the symbol of change in the quality of resources so if your labor force goes from low skill to high skill that's a change in the quality And three, if there are improvements in technology, okay? Technology enabling resources like labor to be able to produce more per unit of time. Improvements in technology, okay? So anytime, even in macroeconomics, where we get a change in the quantity of resources or a change in the quality of resources or their technological improvements, then we are achieving an increase or a decrease in the production possibilities curve. So let's assume that the Russian Federation, as a result of high birth rates, has an increase in the quantity of labor within the economy. And let's say that as a result of investments in education that improves the human capital of the nation from low skill to high skill, that's a change in the quality of the labor resources. And as a result of technological improvements, uh, they also achieve a, a growth in their production possibilities curve. So that would lead to the PPC curve shifting outward, all right, from PPC1 to PPC2, okay? So if there's a change in that quantity of resources, quality or technological improvements, the PPC curve would shift outward, okay? So hopefully that is that is clear. And if uh, they're able to employ more resources, then perhaps they're able to move closer to their new production possibilities curve. So if they're employing more resources, perhaps they're moving from GH, let's say they're moving to point I. All right, they continue to move to point I. That's an increase in actual growth, which is technically economic growth because they're increasing outputs of both X and Y good or rockets and barley. And they're trying to get as close as they can to the PPC curve by employing more and more of their resources. Um, okay. And vice versa, can the curve shift inward? Can we shift in from PPC2 to PPC1? Yes, if there's a decrease in the quantity of resources. So unfortunately, as we see in Syria, where people are fleeing as refugees from that nation. There's a decrease in the quantity of labor resources, or if there's a change in the quality of their resources, perhaps um, they're not investing as much in education. And over time, the quality of the labor force is, is diminishing from high skill to maybe mid or low skill. Then the PPC curve would shift in, all right? So that should be clear. Any change here, one, 
two or three would lead to a shift in the PPC curve, right? And as they employ more resources, they're get, achieving actual growth. Okay? And that movement from PPC one to PPC two is also economic growth. There's a growth in the production possibilities. There's an increase in the output uh, potential of the, of the economy. All right, good. So you can shift outward and inward. One last point. Are the shifts of the PPC curve always parallel or even, right? From the distance between here and here? Not necessarily, right? That could be a result of um, acquiring resources that are suitable for the production of one good, but not so suitable for the production of the other. So if the Russian Federation, for example, um, was able to acquire, you know, uh, new land that provided the needed inputs to produce rockets and that land was not suitable for barley production then you would have an uneven shift in the production possibilities curve it could actually you know look like this you're able to generate more rockets with that land that provides the um, inputs to produce rockets but that land is not suitable for barley production so you can have the curve shifting out on the x-axis, but no change on the y-axis or an uneven shift. Okay, and that's it. So we've gone over these concepts, economic growth, actual growth, growth in the PPC curve as a result of a change in these uh, variables. And uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.